I remember having played against the Rubinstein variation of the French a few times from the white side and to be honest, I wasn't very pleased with the positions and the results. And many players who play first e4 feel the same way, especially against the French in general and the Rubinstein variation. So we are going to take a deeper look at the Rubinstein variation and to do so, we are going to analyze the game Grandmaster Nikola Djukic against International Master Dritan Mehmedi, which was played in the second round of the European Team Championship. This being said, let's just go to the game. Grandmaster Nikola Djukic played first e4, black played e6, d4, d5, and now knight to c3. Now the Rubinstein variation is d takes e4, knight takes e4. Before we move on, I want to show you a transposition. If white played knight to d2, then black still could take on e4, and after knight takes e4, the position is exactly the same. And this is one of the reasons why the Rubinstein variation is popular, because you can cover two variations with the same position basically. So against knight to c3 and against knight to d2, the Steinitz and the Tarash. So two major lines are covered. Knight to d7 is the typical move. Knight to f3, knight g f6. So the knight on f6 is defended by the knight on d7 and also the queen, but usually the knight on d7 wants to recapture the knight. But it's also attacking the knight on e4, as you can see, and as pointed out. So a reliable move here is something like bishop to d3 or the main line, which was, which was played by Grandmaster Jukic, and this is knight takes f6 check, knight takes f6. Now, why is the white squared bishop marked? White usually wants to develop it to d3, and this is also the natural square of the bishop. However, in some variations, White wants the bishop to stay on f1, so it can later check on b5 without moving twice. And we will see a variation. So white plays c3, and let's say black plays c5. And now you can see if the bishop was on d3, it would move a second time later. Not now. For example, knight e5, a6 is one of the main moves here, just to prevent bishop to b5. But let's check another variation. Bishop e3, queen to c7, and now bishop b5 check, bishop d7, and the bishops are exchanged, and then white can already play d5 and try to get a slight advantage. So as you can see, usually black doesn't want the bishop to check on b5 with the support of the knight on e5. So therefore, e a6 is a very popular move. However, in the game, not c5 was played, but bishop to d6. And as you can see, later on, this bishop might pin the knight. And the bishop on d6 would be forced to retreat if black wanted to unpin this knight. And this might be the reason why this variation with bishop to d6 isn't as popular. So now white plays bishop to d3, black castles and white plays bishop to g5. And now we have the pin and the bishop on d6 doesn't look very good. And moving back to e7 would cost a tempo. You don't want to lose tempo or time. So black played b6. And after the very strong queen e2 move, we would land in the position which was played by Lendermann from the black side. Lendermann is a strong grandmaster. However, this position isn't good at all for black. Say bishop to b7. And now the idea of white castling queenside looks not very natural, but the king on c1 is safe and later it can move to b1 while also having enough pieces or trans transferring enough pieces to the king's side to start an attack. Usually uh, follows h6 or something like h6 and bishop to h4. 
and white has an advantage. But let's go back. In the game, not queen e2 was played, this move which would grant white an advantage, but knight to e5, which is a little bit worse, but still not a bad move. Now bishop to b7 was played. And white continued with queen to e2. And of course, black did not take this g2 pawn because it's very dangerous. After rook to g1, black is already in huge trouble. So the bishop has to retreat and there's some pressure on this knight, which can be increased. And there's also this pressure along the G file, also not so nice. So now let's go back. This would be just completely one for white. So instead of bishop takes g2, c5 was played. And now white still could have gone for queen side castling. And this looks not very natural because the c file might open at some point. But actually it's absolutely fine. For white, white even has an advantage. So rook d1 was played. A very solid move. And now black committed a blunder with c takes d4. And now there is this idea of the Greek gift with bishop takes h7 check. This might have come as a surprise if white had played it. Because after king h7 it is not obvious how white wants to exploit the weak king. But you will see in one moment how this is working. Rook takes d4 putting some pressure along the d file, but also offering or threatening rook h4 check. King g8 and now knight to g4. So the bishop cannot move and the knight is pinned. So what to do? Let's play a move like e5. Then, okay, the rook just drops back. Everything is fine. Rook e8 and now bishop takes f6 and black is completely lost. After g takes f6, knight h6 check and the king is soon mated or black loses material. For example, queen to d7, covering this mate on f7. Rook d6 and the queen is attacked and cannot regain the piece because then there is this checkmate. And... In this position, white is only one pawn up, but the coordination of the black pieces is just horrible and this is completely lost. But white did not play this. White instead went for bishop to b1. And bishop takes h7 check had been obviously better. And bishop b1 is weaker, but it's a move. And it's not clear how black wants to solve the problems. One try would be h6 and then bishop to h4. And it looks like the position is more or less okay for black compared to the other variations. And there's no Greek gift sacrifice on h7 anymore because there is no h7 pawn anymore. So let's go back. But instead of h6, bishop to a6 was played attacking the queen. And the idea is to take the knight on e5. But Grandmaster Chukic just chose that after queen takes a6, bishop takes e5. The position is completely lost after. Queen to d3. It's threatening checkmate. After taking on f6, there is no defender of h7. So... Black is in huge troubles, plays g6, and now followed queen to f3, and black played queen to d5, and white found a beautiful move here, which he probably had seen much earlier, and this is c takes d4. And now black is just losing material in every variation, because if he exchanges then two pieces are attacked 
and he can only save one. And also this bishop, which is defending the f f6 knight, has to move because it is also attacked. So either way, black is completely lost and therefore resigning after queen f3, queen d5, c takes d4 was a very reasonable decision. Let me know what you think about this game. Have you seen this plan against the Rubinstein? If you like the video, feel free to hit the like button. And if you want to see more of such videos, think about subscribing the channel. See you.